My name is Jonathan Yarber, and today on WP Tuts Plus, I'll be showing you how to move your WordPress site from one location to another. That could be from one server to another, or the same server, just changing the address of your website. Either way, I'm going to cover the ins and outs of moving WordPress, all the necessary tools you need, and how to do it in a simple and easy to use video. This video is aimed at beginners, so developers sit back, relax, you should know all the stuff you're about to hear. Before we begin, I'm going to start off by showing you what we need and some information about WordPress that you need to know before you can continue. So to start off, I have my own website here that Dev Notes called Dev Notes. Notice I'm using dvnot.es. I would like to move my site. I currently have a site that I've been working on. I've been working on this for a while and I've been ready to launch it. However, I need to move the files and change the database information so my website will work at the new location. I'm going to run you through the same process anybody would use if they're moving from one host to another or just move, simply moving it from the same server. Again, all of these actions will apply. Things we'll need is a web hosting panel. Most hosts will provide a C panel, or in this case I'm using Plesk. All of these which will provide a way to administrate your database through a panel called PHP My Admin. If you don't know how to get to this, simply search for PHP My Admin or MySQL in your panel. If you cannot find it, please contact your host as they should provide one. In addition to those, you'll need a few programs on your machine to help you execute the move. First off, we'll need a text editing program. Some people prefer the free program called Notepad++ for Windows. I use a program called Sublime Text 2 which works on Mac, PC, and Windows. Last, we'll need an FTP program, which will allow us to connect to our web host and move the files from their machine to our machine. You might have to connect to two different hosts if you're moving from one host to another. You can download this free FTP program at winscp.net. Make sure you've connected to the FTP server with the information provided by your host. All right, assuming you have all your tools ready, now I'm going to, be going to explain some of the technical aspects of WordPress and how it works so you can better understand me later on in the video. WordPress is comprised of two essential elements, the files it needs to run, which you can view through the FTP program WinSCP. Secondly, WordPress requires you to use a database, a MySQL database to manage all the content including the options, the users, post, and more. These two work together to make your site. One can't run without the other and they all comprise, all make up your website. So first let's focus on the files. What files do we need? Which files do we not need to move WordPress? WordPress uses what's called a naming convention or basically a pattern that repeats itself to let you know what's WordPress and what's not. So for instance, if you look at this directory, you can see there's a CGI bin, there's a directory called videos, and there's a bunch of other stuff with WP dash, whatever the name of the file may or folder may be. Anything with the WP in it, instantly you know, is WordPress. So that includes files and folders both. However, there are a few exceptions to this. The HT access file is imperative you keep, as well as the index.php file. Additionally, there is the XML RPC file. These three files you need to have and move, but they do not have the WP naming convention added to them. Additionally, there are three other files you may have that you, you will need to move with your WordPress. This is optional, but it is recommended you move these files. The license.txt file, the readme.html file, and the five icon if your website has one. When moving your site, you can move all other files. You can move all all files, but these are the only recommended files you have to have to move your site. If you have external content such as videos uploaded outside of WordPress, you'll need to move those as well. But that's not being covered in this tutorial. Next, we're going to go over how to move the database. So, the way a MySQL database works is it is stored through a protocol on your web host. It's very complicated, but to simplify it, we use a control panel called PHP My Admin. This takes your database and turns it into an interface from which you can view all the data and manage the data easily. This panel is very complex and has a lot of tools. However, we'll only be using a few tools in this product. Anytime you use PHP My Admin, make sure you select your database by clicking on the name of the database on your left-hand side. 
This will make sure you're interacting with this database and not any other database. If you're having a hard time connecting to your phpMyAdmin or don't know the name of your WordPress database, you can find these by logging into your FTP information and going to the wp-config file. Open this up and you'll see some connection information which tells you which database name you're using, the username, and the password. The, you will need, sometimes you will need these inform this information to log into your PHP and MyAdmin panel. Or, again, know which database. You can reference this file at any time. Now that we've gone over the basics of how to move the site, let's begin the moving process. Now that, we're, now that I'm done explaining, the first thing we're going to do is back up all of the content on our website, so in case we goof up, we can always correct our mistakes. So, using the FTP program, I am literally going to download all of the information from the FTP site to my local machine. Again, using the WP naming convention and knowing which files are on my FTP, I'll select all the files I want to download. Simply drag and drop to your local folder and that process will begin. This process usually takes five minutes or less depending on the speed of your internet connection and the size of your WordPress site. I'm going to fast forward ahead when this is done. Now that my files are done downloading, I now need to upload them at the new location. If you're moving to a new site, this is when you close this FTP out and start the new one at the new location. If you're moving your own site, you would simply move to the site location you're moving to. Before we begin moving to the new location, let's first back up the old location. So our current site, we're just going to say old site. Make a new folder and drop everything inside that. Alright, so in order to move this new site out, we've already made a backup copy on our own local machine. So we'd essentially just move to the new location and upload everything we need to. Again, I'm going to fast forward to when this is done. All right, now the file is moving. Now moving the files to the new location is done. This part of the site is now complete. However, keep the FTP open. We'll have to come back to this shortly. Let's go to our text editor and close out our config file. Make sure all those are gone so we don't get confused later on. We're going to go ahead and minimize the uh, FTP. And now let's focus on the database. So we have our old database either at our old host or at the same host we're already using. Either way, we need to back this up just as we did the files. So again, make sure we select the database we, want, we need. Again, make sure if you reference your, config, your WP config file, which database your WordPress is using. So from here, let's go ahead and go to export. We want to make sure all of our databases are selected, which they automatically should be. Scroll to the bottom. We need to make sure we're saving as a file and there's no compression. Let's click Go. We should get an SQL file. Let's go ahead and just save this. Let's open up our text editor. editor. Let's actually open up this file. So what we have is we have a giant file for all of our SQL information that we saw before. This is what it looks like in a text file. It's very it's very hard to read. There's a lot of information here. However, we need to use a find and replace uh, tool with our editor. So let's go to find, replace. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find all instances of HTTP colon slash slash dev notes slash new site. Make sure you always trail with the, make sure your trailing slash always gets eliminated as this is stored this way inside WordPress. So we're moving this to dev notes without any directory. This is only for people that are re rewriting their URL. If your site's domain is not changing, the www, the HTTPS, as if you're using a secure SSL certificate, this is only for people that are moving their site address URL, such as to a new domain, a new directory, etc. If you're not doing this, skip this step. So our old location replaced with our new location. Again, no trailing slashes. Let's replace all. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And then go ahead and, go ahead and close this file. So at this point, you would assume you're moving to the new PHP MyAdmin panel on the new host, if you're moving host. If not, you're staying on the same host. What we need to do is, again, select the database, check all, and then drop the selected tables. 
click yes to confirm you want to drop these. Again, make sure you've downloaded your backup first, otherwise this, this information is lost permanently. All right, let's go ahead and select your database yet again. It'll say no tables are found. So now we need to import all the information we just changed. So let's go locate that file. Be dev notes number two. All right, let's go ahead and click go. And now you can see all of our information has returned to us. If we go to WP options, we'll notice, th we'll notice that the site URL is now without the address underneath it. All right, so now that that's changed, that's how you would replace your SQL information if you were to be on the same, at the same database on the same host. Now for a second, let's pretend we move to a new host and we have a new database that we have to set up. So let's go over here and go to databases and let's add a new database. This is going to be called dev notes launch underscore launch, okay? All right, so let's do dev notes underscore L for launch. Let's use a temporary password, password two. All right, now we have our username and a password to it. Now we can access the web admin part. Let's go ahead and close this other one out so we don't get confused. As you notice, there's still no tables found in the database. A quick note, while this is happening, your website will show this error message. So let's remedy this problem by reestablishing the connection, by uploading the tables, and again, changing the information. All right, so we've created the database and the users to that database. Now we're back in PHP My Admin at the new location. So again, the first thing we need to do is select our database. It'll show there's no tables found in the database. That's important. If you try to import without selecting the database, you'll get an error. All right, let's go ahead and click on Import. Let's select the SQL file we created earlier. And let's click Go. All right, it's select successfully imported, and let's check to make sure all of our options are correct. And they are, so let's move from here. So if we try to go to our site, we'll still have a database error connection. That means the data, that means WordPress still cannot connect to this database, probably because the connection information is still pointing at the old site. If you're still getting your website, be careful to make sure you update it to the new database information, if you have any. If you don't, keep going. So, to remedy this problem, we need to go back to, F to our FTP at the new location we are at and open up our WP config file. All right, so you'll notice it still has the old information. Let's move this over here. We can minimize this. And let's, let's open up our information over here. So, we know our database name is devnotes underscore launch. So let's change our, our database to that. The username we created was admin underscore dev notes underscore L. Let's change that. And our password was password2. I don't recommend you use a word like that for password. The more complex the password is, the better. Many shared hosts will have a specific host for your database. If not, localhost is it will be used. If you cannot find this, again, contact your host. They will give you all the information you need. Let's go ahead and save this file. Go up to control save which will in turn upload automatically with WinSCP. All right, so that's been changed, and let's go to our site. All right, as you can see, our site's now have has been moved. Let's try one of those those links to make sure everything's working correctly. All right. Things are looking great. Let's make sure these images got moved as well. Perfect. See there's no new slash new site in there. That's because all of our posts got changed when we replaced the information before. Our site's been successfully moved. Congratulations. So at this point, we're done. Now I'm gonna make a few closing notes to clarify what we've done today. Again, we have two separate things we're working with. We have our FTP files. Again, FTP is file transfer protocol. You need a program to do this. We have our database, which we moved, replaced any URLs that are changed if you had any, and then reapplied it to the database. 
I didn't move from one host to another. However, it's a little different if you did. Make sure you're using separate separate FTP instances as well as separate database instances instances as they are two separate entities. One last quick tick before I go off. Let's pretend we want to move the site again. We're going to call this sandbox. Just create a folder and we want to move all this content again, correct? WP admin, WP, WP, got our files, we're good. So instead of having to download this directly, since we already have a backup, what we can do is right click and click on duplicate. And this only works on people on the same server move. So what we want to duplicate this to is our target, which is the current directory we're in, slash sandbox with a trailing slash. Make sure you keep the star period star, star because that'll make sure all the current uh, files are moved as the same name. And let's click on OK. You might get a pop-up that says, do you want to keep... Th you might get a pop-up and just click on OK if you had a problem with that. Um, as you can see, this this will duplicate it locally on the machine, so you don't have to download it. So let's go ahead and go open the sandbox, and all our files are here, and they've been duplicated. That's just a quick tip to make sure things are done faster. I know it's a hassle to upload because often internet service providers will give you a slow upload speed. In closing, if you're still having if you're, if you're still having problems, please refer to the text version below, as that might give you slower and easier descriptions of each process. Any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer them. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day and keep on blogging.